Rick and Shara Melick offer a comprehensive approach to Bible teaching in their work, emphasizing a transformative journey that goes beyond mere knowledge acquisition to actual life change. They advocate for Christ-centered biblical teaching, where the teacher plays a crucial role in connecting learners not just to scriptural knowledge, but to a deep, personal understanding and application of these teachings. The core of their teaching model revolves around several connections to God, to the governing objective of the lesson, to an appropriate life response, to contemporary biblical application, and to the historical truth of the scripture passage. This multifaceted approach ensures that the learning is not just academic, but deeply personal and spiritually enriching. The Meliks accentuate the importance of transformation, where the ultimate goal of Bible teaching is to facilitate a genuine change in the learners steering them towards becoming more Christ-like in their thoughts, actions, and decisions. This involves a shift from being passive receivers of information to active, engaged participants in their spiritual journey. The results section of the Star Bible Study Plan is particularly affirmed, where learners are encouraged to understand and obey Scripture, making life choices that reflect their faith and growth. Teachers are urged to foster an environment of deep reflection and personal challenge, guiding learners to apply the biblical truths to their own lives meaningfully. The approach is particularly effective for activist learners who thrive on action and practical application, influencing others through their enthusiasm and commitment. Also, the chapter delves into the role of transformative neuroscience, illustrating how learning engages complex brain functions, leading to thoughtful application and change. By understanding these cognitive processes, Teachers can better facilitate learning experiences that lead to lasting transformation and personal growth in their learners. This sophisticated blend of theology, pedagogy, and neuroscience asserts the Melek's vision of impactful, life-changing Bible teaching. Moreover, Rick Melek and Shara Melek explores the transformative power of deep, committed learning in Christian life. The work critiques superficial adherence to Christian doctrine urging believers to embody the essence of Christ's teachings through action. Central to their argument is the revised Bloom's Taxonomy, which highlights the need for an educational journey encompassing memory, understanding, application, analysis, evaluation, and creation. This progression enables learners to engage with content at increasing complexity, fostering profound personal change. The authors contend that Christian education often neglects these higher-order thinking skills, focusing instead on rote memorization and understanding. They advocate for a shift towards comprehensive learning strategies that encourage critical thinking, personal reflection, and practical application. This approach is vital for nurturing true Christian growth, moving individuals beyond mere knowledge acquisition to life-altering application. Illustrating their point, the Meleks recount a deeply moving funeral of a young, devout man whose posthumous message inspired the congregation to live out their faith more fully. This narrative exemplifies the ultimate goal of learning, to incite meaningful action and support community well-being. Furthermore, they present the star model of transformational teaching, a holistic framework that integrates emotional, cognitive, and spiritual dimensions of learning. This model aims to cultivate a learning environment where individuals don't just learn about Christian teachings but actively incorporate them into their lives. By progressing through the stages of relationship, relevance, revelation, responsibility, and results, learners are encouraged to develop a deep personal connection with their faith, leading to a transformative Christian walk that's evident in their actions and interactions. This approach ultimately indicates the author's vision of an actively engaged, continuously growing Christian community. In addition, Rick Melick and Shara Melick maintains the importance of evaluation in the educational process, engaging both learners and teachers in a reflective dialogue. Evaluation is presented not as a one-sided tool, but as a continuous, interactive process, crucial for effective learning and teaching. From the learner's perspective, evaluation is an ongoing, often spontaneous judgment of the teacher's effectiveness, encompassing factors such as the teacher's appearance, body language, credibility, and communication. Learners internally question the relevance and clarity of the material, and their silent critiques can significantly impact their engagement and learning outcomes. Negative evaluations, especially when unexpressed, can hinder the learning process, 
pointing out the need for a communicative outlet. For teachers, evaluation involves discerning whether students are truly understanding and engaging with the material as intended. It's a reflective practice that asks teachers to consider the effectiveness of their teaching strategies and the learning environment they cultivate. The authors advocate for mechanisms like anonymous suggestion boxes in classrooms, encouraging students to voice their frustrations and praises. This feedback, when taken seriously and acted upon, can lead to meaningful changes in teaching methods and classroom dynamics. Teachers are encouraged to value all feedback, understanding that even negative comments are opportunities for growth and improvement. The underlying message is that teaching is a vocation, reiterated by the reference to the Apostle Paul, who also faced criticism. This perspective calls for a commitment to continuous improvement and responsiveness to learners' needs. The text promotes a culture of open communication and ongoing evaluation in educational settings, viewing it as essential for effective teaching and deep learning. It's about creating a responsive, dynamic educational experience where both learners and teachers are actively engaged in the process of education, continually striving for excellence and understanding. Further, constructed learner evaluation is a critical concept repeated by Rick and Shara Melick, advocating for its regular integration to significantly enhance the learning process. This approach is designed to bridge the gap between teacher and learner perceptions, ensuring a more accurate and holistic understanding of the educational experience. The Meliks propose that while teachers have their own views on how effectively they're delivering lessons, learners might see it differently. Constructed evaluations are therefore employed to surface these disparities and align understanding leading to a more effective teaching and learning environment. To operationalize this concept, the Meliks introduced the STAR Model Learners Evaluation Tool. This evaluative instrument is meant to be completed by learners after their educational experience, providing feedback on various facets of the learning session. It's structured as an 18-item questionnaire, where learners rate aspects on a scale of 1, very poor, to 5, very well done. The parameters include the introduction's excitement and relevance, the quality and clarity of Bible content, the application of principles to contemporary living, and the encouragement of personal action. It also examines the lesson's wrap-up, opportunities provided for experimental learning, peer collaboration, personal reflection and discussion, as well as the emotional support and friendship facilitation among learners. Besides, the tool assesses the creativity in teaching, the push towards self-directed learning, and the inclusivity of teaching methods catering to auditory, visual, and kinesthetic tactile learners. This comprehensive feedback mechanism ultimately gives an overall rating for the effectiveness of the lesson, enabling educators to make informed and targeted improvements. The constructed learner evaluation is thus a reflective tool, encouraging continual enhancement in educational methods and strategies to benefit both the teacher and the learner. Additionally, the concept of spontaneous teacher evaluation is thoroughly explored as an intrinsic part of the teaching process. This form of evaluation is characterized as informal, continual, and reflective, occurring during and after every teaching session. Teachers engage in this evaluative process by intuitively gauging the effectiveness of their teaching methods, primarily through keen observation of students' body language and verbal feedback. This real-time feedback loop allows educators to adapt their instructional approach on the spot, tailoring their methods to better suit the learning dynamics of the classroom. The authors underline the participatory nature of effective teaching, noting that student engagement through questions, discussions, and group activities is vital for a teacher to assess the learning outcomes accurately. These interactions are not only instrumental in understanding the immediate effectiveness of the lesson, but also serve as a critical component of the teacher's spontaneous evaluation. Post-lesson reflection is underscored as a pivotal element of the teaching process. Educators are encouraged to critically analyze each session's successes and failures, contemplating what could be retained or altered for future lessons. This reflective practice embodies the philosophy of teaching as a lifelong learning process, where there is always room for enhancement and innovation. Ultimately, the Melix advocate for a mindset of continual growth and improvement in teaching. The perpetual question, how could I do this more effectively next time, 
drives educators to evolve their instructional methods, ensuring that they are providing the most effective and engaging learning experience possible. This commitment to self-evaluation and adaptation is what the authors identify as the hallmark of a truly effective and responsive educator. Also, constructed teacher evaluations are essential tools designed to enhance and reflect on the teaching process. These evaluations come in two types, each serving a distinct purpose in the continual improvement of teaching methods. The first type is integrated within the teaching session itself, as seen in the STAR model adult lesson plan. Here, each segment of the lesson plan includes an evaluation component, enabling the teacher to assess and adapt in real time. By observing students' reactions to various activities, instructors can gauge the effectiveness of their methods and the clarity of the content presented. This approach promotes a dynamic and responsive teaching environment, where the educator's flexibility is key to meeting the diverse learning needs of students. The second type is a meta-evaluation, a reflective tool used after the lesson has been delivered. This is exemplified by Robert Stack's model, referenced by Richards and Bredfelt. Post-lesson evaluations encourage teachers to introspectively analyze the entire teaching session, asking critical questions about what strategies succeeded and what could be improved. This type of evaluation fosters a habit of reflection and continuous learning, enabling teachers to glean insights from both their successes and shortcomings. To practically apply these concepts, the Melix provide a detailed teacher self-evaluation form. This form allows educators to rate themselves on various aspects of the lesson, from connecting students to the material to ensuring an engaging and diverse teaching approach. Such structured self-assessment is instrumental in guiding teachers toward more effective and adaptive teaching strategies, ultimately enhancing the learning experience for students. Through these constructed teacher evaluations, educators are equipped with the tools to evolve and refine their teaching, ensuring that each lesson is as impactful as possible. Moreover, in the Connecting Results Through the STAR Model Adult Lesson Plan Part 4, the emphasis pivots towards the practical and personal application of scripture principles by contemporary adults. This segment, titled Results, is the culmination of the lesson plan where the learner is encouraged to introspect and consider personal application of the biblical teachings. It is here that the spiritual meets the practical, urging learners to transition from understanding to action. The structure of this section is methodical and intentional. It begins with setting a clear objective. Learners should commit to an action that signifies obedience to the principles discussed. This is not about passive learning but about active, personal transformation. The description then prompts the teacher to provide a list of actionable responses. These are not just theoretical, but tailored suggestions that reflect genuine, personal obedience to the scripture's teachings. The methods part is about how the teacher plans to inspire and challenge learners to commit to these life-altering actions. It's a call for strategic, thoughtful engagement with the content. Evaluation is another critical component. Teachers are guided to look for concrete signs of commitment to personal action among learners. It is a measure of the lesson's impact on the individual's life choices and spiritual growth. The wrap-up serves as a succinct summary of the lesson, reinforcing the main points and ensuring that the core message is clear and memorable. Furthermore, the section on materials reminds the teacher to be well-prepared with all necessary resources— accentuating the importance of a well-structured and resourceful learning environment. This part of the lesson plan, therefore, is not just about knowledge transmission, but about facilitating a transformative experience that encourages adult learners to embody the principles they study and reflect this change in their personal lives. It's a holistic approach that combines understanding, reflection, and action in the spiritual journey. In addition, Rick and Shara Malik provide a comprehensive approach to teaching with a strong emphasis on action and response. In their framework, the ultimate goal of teaching, particularly within a religious or spiritual context, is not just the acquisition of knowledge, but the transformation of behavior and the cultivation of a personal, obedient response to the teachings. This methodology is deeply rooted in the belief that learners should actively engage with the text, seeking guidance and illumination from the Holy Spirit to recognize and act upon personal areas of needed obedience. The teachers are guided to craft objectives that are not merely informational, but are deeply actionable and personal. 
These objectives are tied back to the governing objective of the lesson, ensuring that each learning outcome contributes to the larger goal of the teaching series or curriculum. By employing action verbs in the learning objectives, teachers clearly communicate the expected response from the learners. This clarity helps to direct the learner's actions and encourages a more deliberate and thoughtful response to the text. To make the objectives learner-centered and measurable, the Meleks suggest practical, achievable actions that learners can commit to. For instance, an action objective might involve committing to pray without ceasing over a specific period, such as a week. To reinforce this commitment, learners might sign a commitment card, providing a tangible reminder of their decision and a tool for accountability. This approach not only affirms the importance of personal decision and action in response to spiritual teaching, but also provides a clear, measurable way to track obedience and engagement with the lesson's objectives. Ultimately, this method fosters a more interactive and impactful learning experience, encouraging learners to move beyond passive listening to active, obedient engagement with their faith. Further, Rick Mellick and Shara Mellick assert the importance of transforming Bible study principles into actionable steps. The approach is learner-centric, allowing participants to either adopt suggested actions, devise their own, or opt for none, particularly in response to Galatians 5.14's edict to love your neighbor as yourself. The first suggested action is a deep, personal reflection, urging learners to confront their self-criticisms by listing aspects of their appearance they dislike. This exercise is not merely about acknowledgement, but involves a prayerful request for forgiveness for harboring self-hatred and a plea for help in self-acceptance, recognizing their creation in God's image. The physical act of tearing the list represents a symbolic rejection of these negative self-perceptions, reinforcing their commitment to self-love as a reflection of divine love. The second action extends this concept of love to others, specifically targeting someone the learner finds difficult to like. This step involves not just a prayerful request for the capacity to love the challenging individual, but also a concrete gesture of goodwill toward them within the week. Whether it's sharing a meal, offering a gift, or helping with a chore, the act serves as a practical demonstration of God's love through personal action. The final suggestion aims to instill a continuous practice of love and kindness. Writing a pledge to love others as I love me serves as a daily reminder, placed in a prominent spot. Accompanied by random acts of kindness, this practice is a constant reaffirmation of the learner's commitment to live out the biblical principle of reciprocal love. These actions, recommended by the Melix, are more than mere exercises. They are transformative steps designed to help learners internalize and live out biblical teachings, fostering a deeper connection with self, others, and the divine directive of love. Besides, Rick and Shara Melek's methods for encouraging scriptural action focus on practical and supportive approaches to teaching service within the church community. One of their primary methods is apprenticeship, where learners, feeling a call to serve, can partner with experienced members in various service roles. This method is vital for guiding individuals who are interested but unsure about the specifics of service, ranging from children's ministry to food bank facilitation. The text illustrates the importance of this method through a scenario contrasting two approaches to assigning service tasks. In the ineffective approach, a learner is abruptly assigned a daunting task, often leading to a negative experience. In contrast, the Meleks advocate for a nurturing approach, where learners are gradually introduced to service through mentorship and partnership with experienced members, allowing them to grow in confidence and skill at their own pace. The apprenticeship is framed within a broader context of scriptural action, referencing Jesus' example of service in John 13. Teachers are encouraged to use this scriptural foundation to inspire and guide learners towards service. They suggest presenting learners with various upcoming service opportunities and allowing them to choose a path that resonates with their sense of call. Importantly, this approach highlights personal readiness and ensures that learners are not left to serve alone prematurely. The Melek's approach is deeply considerate of the individual's journey, acknowledging the need for a supportive and gradual introduction to service. It effectively bridges the gap between feeling called to serve and actively participating in meaningful service, fostering a prepared, confident, and committed approach to serving others in the church and broader community. Additionally, 
the evaluation of a lesson's effectiveness is multidimensional, focusing on both the process and the outcome. The authors stress the importance of assessing whether learners have met the lesson's objectives while respecting their privacy. This delicate balance is maintained by observing tangible actions indicative of commitment. For instance, in a lesson aimed at fostering self-love and acceptance, the teacher might observe learners writing down traits they dislike about themselves, engaging in prayer, and then symbolically tearing up these negative self-assessments. The lesson wrap-up is a crucial component, succinctly encapsulating the key messages and learnings of the session. It serves as a moment to reinforce the overarching theme of the lesson, in this case the importance of loving oneself as God loves us and extending this love to others. This recapitulation helps solidify the lesson's objectives and encourages learners to integrate these teachings into their daily lives, committing to acts of love as part of their routine. Evaluating the learner's understanding of the governing lesson objective is also vital. This involves revisiting the primary focus of the lesson and identifying indicators of comprehension and application. Learners might demonstrate their grasp of the lesson by sharing their acts of love on a class website, providing concrete evidence of their engagement with the material and its application in their lives. Also, meticulous preparation of materials indicates the entire teaching process. A comprehensive list ensures that nothing is left to chance encompassing everything from the tangible, like paper and pencils, to the more complex, like PowerPoint presentations and scripts. This level of detailed planning is indicative of the Melek's holistic approach to teaching, maintaining the importance of creativity, thoroughness, and a deep commitment to impactful and respectful education. Last but not least, Part 4 of the Star Model Adult Lesson Plan focuses on achieving tangible results from the biblical teachings pointing out the application of scripture in learners' personal lives. This segment aims to guide learners towards a commitment to personal actions of obedience, based on Romans 5. 1. 5. By knowing peace with God, sharing faith, and glorifying God amidst challenges. The lesson plan suggests actionable steps for learners such as accepting Christ as their Savior, learning to share their faith with others, and finding ways to honor God during difficult times. To facilitate these actions, it offers a variety of methods, providing study sheets detailing the steps to peace with God, encouraging peer-to-peer -peer practice in sharing faith, initiating personal reflection and prayer time, engaging learners through a class website for sharing their spiritual journey and personal follow-up from the teacher. Evaluation of commitment to personal action is determined by the participation of learners in discussing and practicing the plan of salvation engaging in reflective prayer, and actively participating on the class website. The lesson concludes by summarizing the key teachings, the path to peace with God through Jesus Christ, the importance of sharing one's faith, and the need to glorify God in all circumstances. Materials listed for the lesson include various instructional and supportive items, like a book for drama representation, grease board, pens, and specifically tailored study sheets. An exercise at the end encourages teachers to rate and reflect on their facilitation of learning, responsiveness to learner concerns, and adaptability to feedback, reiterating a continuous improvement approach to teaching. Overall, this lesson plan repeats the importance of active learner engagement and continuous teacher development to foster a deep, personal understanding and application of biblical principles. In conclusion, Rick and Shara Melick's approach to Bible teaching underlines meaningful, transformative learning that extends beyond intellectual understanding, focusing on tangible life changes that embody Christian values. Their pedagogy intertwines an understanding of cognitive processes with a deeply spiritual methodology, encouraging learners to develop a personal, actionable commitment to the teachings of Christ. This method aims not only for knowledge retention, but also for a genuine application of biblical principles in the learner's daily life. Moreover, central to their teaching philosophy is the concept that true education in faith should lead to Christ-like transformation within the individual. To facilitate this, they recommend an educational progression that embraces the revised Bloom's taxonomy, encouraging learners to engage with information in a manner that cultivates complex reasoning and reflection leading to the creation of new ideas or behaviors in alignment with Christian teachings. Furthermore, 
a key element of their framework is the STAR model, which focuses on holistic learning by combining emotional, cognitive, and spiritual dimensions. This model guarantees that the learning process is integrated and memorable, charting a course from relationship building and biblical revelation to personal responsibility for action. It is about guiding the learner from cognitive engagement with scripture to the practical embodiment of its teachings. In addition, the Melix's frame evaluation as a dual pathway practice where internal evaluations from learners and reflective self-evaluations by teachers play a critical role. For the learner, silent, spontaneous evaluations of the teacher's methods and material inform their engagement and learning, making honest, open communication about these evaluations crucial for classroom dynamics. For the teacher, ongoing assessments, both during and after teaching sessions, inform pedagogical adjustments to better meet the learner's needs. Further, the Melix Star Model Adult Lesson Plan underscores the results portion, which concerns the personal application of scripture, fostering commitment to specific, faithful actions. This approach is punctuated by the inclusion of materials and strategies designed to make the scripture resonate on a personal level and translated into everyday Christian practice. Ultimately, Rick and Shara Melick's vision for Bible teaching is a dynamic, responsive experience that fully immerses learners in the transformative power of God's Word, propelling them beyond passive absorption towards active, faith-led lifestyles.